Welcome to another installment of PORT, my experiment to switch to privacy-respecting, open-source and responsible technology. If you're new to this series, check out my intro video in this playlist where I explain the concept. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up Nextcloud on a Linode server. With your own Nextcloud installation, you can have cloud storage, calendars, notes, reminders, contacts, an office suite, photos, bookmarks, and much more, without having to rely on a third-party provider, such as Google, Apple's iCloud, or Microsoft 365. I'll be walking through it step by step, so let's get started straight away. Many of us use a plethora of services to keep our stuff in the cloud. A typical user might use Dropbox, OneDrive, iCloud Drive or Google Drive to store their files, then another service for calendars, yet another one for reminders, another for contacts and so on. Not to mention stuff like storing and sharing photos and collaborative document editing. The big players, namely Google, Microsoft and Apple, offer integrated solutions for this. Google with their services, Apple with iCloud and Microsoft with Microsoft 365. Nextcloud is an alternative to these services. It is an open source solution which provides file storage, calendars, mail, contacts, reminders, photo galleries and much more. And it's one which you can either host at home, on a server in the cloud or have a third party host for you. Nextcloud is available for free, for home and even office use and an enterprise plan is also available for organizations who need support. With Nextcloud, you can access your data from any computer, tablet and smartphone without having to rely on companies with questionable privacy practices or outside your local jurisdiction. Now, there are many ways to install Nextcloud. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do so on a Linode server. Now, Linode is a cloud service provider, kind of like AWS or GCP, where we're going to set up a Linux-powered virtual machine to host our Nextcloud server, which our clients will then connect to. Now, this might sound complicated, but fear not, it's really very easy, and I'll show you everything step by step. I'll be showing you how to set up your Linode server, how to configure Nextcloud, and how to connect to your services on Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS and Android, which should really have you covered regardless of which device you have. So, let's begin with setting up Linode. So the first step is to create an account with Linode. Just go to linode.com and if you don't already have an account, click this sign up button here and just create an account. Now in my case, I already have an account, so I'm going to log in to my existing Linode account. Now, one thing you're going to need if you want to uh, have your own cloud server is a domain. Strictly speaking, you don't really need a domain, but trust me, if you want to make your life easier, that's going to have to be the case. Now, Linode is actually not a domain registrar. So what you need to do is register a domain and then point it to Linode. So I'm going to go to domains here. And as you can see, there is my existing domain, which I use for my own uh, Nextcloud instance. But in this case, I'm going to click create domain and I'm going to use a domain that I have, which is techgurudemo.com. And uh, you also need to type in an email address, uh, which is the administrator of this domain, basically which in my case is keith at that tech.guru and we can also insert some default records which we don't really need right now so we'll just click create domain now this hasn't registered the domain of course it's just created a record in linode uh, for our domain to be hosted okay so now if you look at this section here ns records okay these are the name server records for our domain, ns1 to ns5.linode.com. So what you need to do is you need to go to wherever you registered your domain and make sure your domain points to these name server records. Now, there are many domain registration companies. 
Uh, Linode actually recommends either Namecheap.com or GoDaddy.com, but any domain registrar will work. Now, in my case, my domain is ironically registered with Amazon Web Services. So I'm just going to go to my domain management console. Click on the techgurudemo.com domain. As you can see right now, the name servers are set to Amazon's own. Okay, so we can click add or edit name servers, remove the Amazon ones, and then start adding the Linode ones, which as you remember are ns1 to ns5.linode.com. So ns1.linode.com. Okay, so as you can see, I've added all of them. Now I'll just click update. Okay, and this can take a few minutes, uh, but generally after a few minutes, your domain uh, name servers have been updated and we can move on to the next step. Okay, so the next step is to actually create our virtual machine, which in Linode is called, well, a Linode. Okay, so I'm going to click create Linode. And then from this screen here, we're going to click on marketplace. Okay, so as you can see here from the marketplace, we have Nextcloud. So this will basically pre-install Nextcloud on the VM that we are creating. So I'll go ahead and click Next Cloud and I'll click Create Linode. Now we need to fill in these options here. Okay, so first of all, the name of the admin user for Next Cloud. I'm just going to set that to Tech Guru. Then we need to enter a password for the admin user, a root password for the MySQL database and the password for the MySQL user. Okay, now for, for, for utmost security, you should probably use three different passwords here, but since this is a demo, I'm not going to bother. Uh, then there are some other options uh, here. I'm actually going to add a sudo user here. I'm just going to type tech guru. Okay, this will just create a user uh, which can manage the server other than the root account. And again, we need to enter a password here and so on. Now, here we can enter Linode API token. So this is required for creating DNS records. Okay, so what we can do is from up here, we can go to our account and I'm going to open API tokens in a new tab. And as you can see, I have an existing token here, which I use for myself. So I'm going to click create a personal access token. And I'm going to call it Tech Guru Demo. And I'm going to set it to not expire. And this is my token. So I'm going to copy this, go back to the previous tab. And I'm going to paste it here where it says to put in my API token. Now, the reason why we'll do this is because even though our domain is techgurudemo.com, we might not want our next cloud to be directly techgurudemo.com. So we might want it to be something like cloud.techgurudemo.com. Okay, so we'll say cloud here and techgurudemo.com here. And then again, here we'll enter our administrator email address. Would you like to use a free Let's Encrypt SSL certificate? Select yes. And now we can move on down here. Okay, so the first one important thing is to choose a region which is close to you. Okay, so if you actually use the speed test page provided by Linode, you can see what latency and what speed you have to different regions. Now, I'm in Europe, so it's probably either going to be London or Frankfurt. And Frankfurt is actually closer to me, so this should be the one that I use. Okay, so just make sure you choose the region which is closest to you geographically. And as you can see, this looks pretty good in my case. So I'm going to go ahead and go back here and set my region to Frankfurt, Deutschland. Okay. Now you need to choose a plan. Now here, when we choose a plan, 
we can choose between dedicated, shared, high memory or GPU. Now, unless you're doing this for a company, okay, if you're just doing this for yourself, your family and so on, you can go ahead and click shared CPU. We're not going to need that much anyway. The most important thing here is the storage. As you can see, by default, every Linode type comes with a default amount of storage. Okay, now you can change your Linode size at a later date without losing any data. So don't start out super big, okay, uh, because you can just scale up as required. In my case, I'm going to use Linode 2 gig, okay, which as you can see comes with 2 gigs of RAM, a CPU and 50 gigabytes of storage, which for this demo is more than enough. But of course, if you know you have more than 50 gigs of files to store in the cloud, you might want to start with a bigger instance type. Next, we will um, provide a label. So this is basically how we identify this Linode. I'm going to call it Tech Guru Demo Next Cloud NC. And we need to provide a root password as well. Now, from down here, okay, you can see that there are some uh, add-ons. All right. Now, I would super duper strongly recommend that you keep the backups add-on enabled. Okay, so as you can see, in my case, I have automatic backups for my account. Okay, so every Linode I create automatically has the backups. But uh, in the in in your case, this might not be the this might not be enabled by default. So make sure that this is clicked. The reason why this is important is that if something happens to your Linode server, you'd lose everything. Okay, but with the backups, you can restore all your data settings and so on to a new Linode. So make sure you keep this enabled. And as you can see, with all of my settings chosen, this is going to cost me $12.50 a month. And that includes the $2.50 a month backup. So we'll go ahead and click Create Linode. As you can see right now, it is now changing, it has now changed state to provisioning. After a few seconds, this state has now changed to running. So as you can see now, our Linode is run. Now, one thing you'll want to do at this point is to go to domains, click on the domain that you just configured, which in my case is techgurudemo.com. And if you scroll down here to A records, you'll see that the subdomain has been pointed to the IP of our server. Now, what we want to do here to get this to work properly is click add an A record. And then just type an at symbol here, which refers to our domain name, and enter the same IP you see here, which in my case is 172.104.143.123, and click Save. So this means that our domain now points to an IP address, and this subdomain here, cloud.tegurudemo.com, also points to that same IP address. So now if I open a new tab, I should be able to go to cloud.techgurudemo.com. Voila, we get to the next cloud uh, login page. We can now log in. Techguru, the password, login. And here we are at the next cloud dashboard. That wasn't so hard, was it? And basically, this gives us some information, okay, the links to download the apps, which I'll show you later. And we'll click Start Using Next Cloud. So with the default installation of Next Cloud, as you can see, we have a dashboard here. We also have a files link, which is basically our cloud drive. Now, as you can see, there's already some stuff by default in this cloud drive, some pictures, some next cloud manuals, and so on. We also get a photos tab, which basically collects all of the photos in our um, files and displays them as a gallery. And we even get this activity monitor so we can, you know, see what we've been doing, what we've created, and so on. But a lot of stuff is missing, like calendars and reminders and notes and so on. So to enable all of that functionality, we'll need to install apps. Now, before installing the apps, it might be a good idea to click on your user profile here and go to settings. 
So from here, you can configure your profile, your name, your email address, etc. And we can fill in all the other stuff. Okay. And if we go to security, you'll see that you can add a password here. Uh, it's also possible to configure two-factor authentication for Nextcloud, which I highly recommend. And uh, other stuff here. Now, this is all the section here that's all related to your personal profile. What we want to do is go to administration and click on overview. Now, as you can see, we are running Nextcloud Hub version 2, okay, which is basically Nextcloud 23. And there are some warnings regarding our setup. Now, I'm not going to go into these um, since um, this is a bit technical and I don't want to make this video too technical, plus it's going to be long already. But you may want to go through these warnings here to improve the performance and security of your next cloud installation. For each of the warnings, you can just click on the link and you will be taken to the documentation for next cloud on how to, and to, to disable those warnings, basically, to fix the problem. But for now, I'm going to go to basic settings. And as you can see from here, we can choose our basic settings. Again, especially if you're doing this for a business, you might want to change the background jobs to be cron, so they run more reliably. Okay, but again, I'm not going to go into that at this point here. What we really want to do is we want to go to users. So here is where you can add all of the people who will be using your Nextcloud account. So for example, if you're doing this for your family at home, you might want to add your significant other and so on. Now, in this case, this is just a demo, so I'm just going to keep myself, but this is where you would add new users. Now, to get calendar and other functionality, we'll go again to our profile and click apps. And from here, we're going to install a bunch of apps which will come in handy. So we're going to go to featured apps here. And as you can see, there are some apps which are not enabled. So what I want to enable first is the calendar. Okay, here. So I'm going to say download and enable. And I also want to enable tasks, which is down here. I also want to enable mail and notes. And then you'll also want to go to office and text from here. And you'll want to enable this guy here. Collabra Online built-in code server. Make sure you choose this one, not the ARM64 version. Okay, so as you can see, as we've been adding apps, more icons have shown up here. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to one of them. I'm going to go to Calendar. And as you can see, I have a calendar here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an event today. Okay, test event, save. And I'm also going to add another calendar. So for example, I'm going to say um, work. So I can keep my work events separate. And I'm going to add a work event, I don't know, on the 4th of January in my case. And I'm going to leave it to be all day, save. Okay, so it's a good idea to add some stuff just to make sure that when we have uh, configured the clients, everything shows up here. Now, you probably already have existing calendars. So what you can do is go to settings and import and click on import calendar. And this will let you import an ICS or VCS file. So from either Google or Office or Microsoft 365 or iCloud, you can export your existing calendar as an ICS file from the calendar application you use or the online portal and import all of your events here. Okay, so you don't have to stay recreating everything. So that's the calendar setup for now. Uh, moving on to notes. This is basically a place to write, well, you know, notes. I'm just going to add a new note. Okay, and I'm going to say this is a test note, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now this actually supports Markdown, guys, if you know what that is. So this, for example, will show up in bold. Okay. And uh, yeah, we can obviously categorize these and so on. I mean, take a while to explore what there is here. Okay. And again, you can 
um, change the settings always from the bottom left corner. Moving on to tasks here. As you can see, there are tasks and task lists. There's a default list just called tasks, which I'm actually going to edit. And I'm going to call it, uh, whoops, I'm going to call it something like personal tasks, for example, and give it a blue color. And I'm going to add another list here called work and give it a yellow color, for example. So now I can go to personal tasks and I can say something like buy milk. Okay, and there we go. Once we click on the task, we can then set a due date and so on. So let's set the due date, for example, to tomorrow in this case. Okay, and I'm also going to go to work tasks here and say, for example, publish quarterly report. Here we go. And I'm going to set the due date for that guy to the end of this quarter. Okay, there we are. So again, we're just adding some stuff so that later when we synchronize uh, with our clients, we can make sure that everything is coming through. Next, I'll move on to mail. Now, mail is basically a mail client that you can add to your next cloud server. Okay, so this is basically a way to access your email directly from your next cloud dashboard rather than having to log in to Gmail, Fastmail, or whatever email provider you use. There are settings here, okay? For IMAP, that's to receive mail, and SMTP, that's to send mail. And it also has some automatic discovery settings that you can use. Now, whether or not you do this is entirely up to you, but in my case, I'm going to leave it empty because obviously the settings that you put here are dependent on your own email provider, okay? So just check the IMAP and SMTP settings for your email provider and you'll be able to enter them there. Now, one other thing that I like to install, and this is just me, is the Bookmarks app. So the Bookmarks app basically lets you uh, synchronize your bookmarks on all your devices, uh, your browser bookmarks, that is. And I find it quite useful. So I, I, I'll click on the search button here and I'll search for bookmarks. And as you can see, there's the Bookmarks app here, which I'll download and enable. So now there's the new Bookmarks icon here. And I can either import Bookmarks or sync with my browser. Now I'll show you how to sync with your browser momentarily. Now, obviously, guys, I've only installed the basic apps here. I mean, again, if you go to the, if you go to the apps list, there's hundreds of applications that you can install, which customize the look of Nextcloud, add more features, integrate with Google Drive, OneDrive, and so on, games, file recognizers, and so on. So take a look at what there is. But what I would recommend is that until you get everything set up, go ahead and leave these apps installed. And with these apps, you'll be able to replicate what you can do on iCloud, Google, and Microsoft 365. Now, since this is going to be where all your files, mail, calendar, notes, and so on is accessible, it's probably a good idea to set up some security right out of the bat, even though I'm just showing you this as a demo. Thanks to our Let's Encrypt certificate, our portal is accessible only via HTTPS. But one thing you really, really should enable is two-factor authentication. Luckily, this is very easy to do with Nextcloud. So all you need to do is, again, when in the apps screen, go to the search box and type TOTP. And this will bring up this app, two-factor TOTP provider. So just go ahead and click download and enable. Now go to the settings, click on security under administration and click enforce two-factor authentication and click Save Changes. Now click on Security under your personal settings and click Enable TOTP. Now what you need to do is add this to whatever Authenticator app you have configured. And I should be able to test this by logging out of my next cloud and then logging in again. And as you can see, I'm now asked for the code so I'll just go ahead and copy it from here, paste it here. 
and just like that, two-factor authentication has been enabled, okay? So that's a pretty important thing to do, guys, straight away. Now, once you're here in the dashboard, note that you can also click Customize and choose what you want to add to your dashboard. By default, you can see that there are files, the weather, mail, and so on, but you can add other stuff, and you can even get more widgets from the App Store, as well as changing your background image. I'm going to leave everything pretty much default at this point. Now, for extra security, you can actually go back to administration and go to security. And you can enable server-side encryption. Now, one thing to note is that if you're not a particularly technical person, uh, you might want to hold off on this for a while. Yes, this does provide additional security. However, it does limit uh, the performance of Nextcloud a little bit and also some apps are not compatible with it. So um, it, it's a good idea to try it out, but I would strongly recommend reading the documentation first and making sure that the apps that you use are compatible with server-side encryption. For the purposes of this demo, I'm not going to enable it just yet. Okay, so now that we have a basic Nextcloud installation with some apps configured and some data to sync, it's time to install the client on our Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, and iOS devices, so we can keep everything in check. Okay, so here we are on a Windows machine. Now, the first thing you'll want to do is log in to your cloud portal. So again, cloud.techgurudemo.com in my case. Okay, so from here, We'll want to go to our profile and go to settings. And from here, you go to mobile and desktop. And what you want to do is download the desktop app. As you can see, we're going to download it for Windows. And the download has finished. Okay, so let's go ahead and install the Nextcloud app now. Okay, so it's a pretty simple next, 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 finish, install. Okay, and we'll click finish. And it tells us that we must restart our system. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and restart later. Now we'll click log in to your next cloud. And here you'll need to type HTTPS colon slash slash and the address of your next cloud installation, which in my case is cloud.techgurudemo.com. Okay, we'll click login and grant access. And now, as you can see, we are logged in. Now, here you can decide what you want to do. We can use virtual files instead of downloading content immediately. Okay, or we can synchronize everything from the server or we can choose what to sync. Now, basically what happens with virtual files is that the files appear on your system, but they're only downloaded once you actually try to access them. Now, alternatively, you can actually synchronize everything from server to have it available offline. Choose what you prefer. Personally, I typically synchronize everything from the server. Okay, I don't really use this virtual files thing, but again, that is entirely up to you. So I'm going to synchronize everything from the server and click connect. And as you can see now, everything is synchronizing. Okay, so now if I go to my file explorer, you can see that there is now a next cloud entry here. And there we go. These are the files from my next cloud drive. Okay, so I can go to here to documents, for example, and I can create a new text document and I'm call it hello from Windows. And just like that, the file will now be synchronized to my next cloud drive. Now, since I haven't restarted yet, I don't get the notification icons that shows the status of these files. So I'm just going to go ahead and give a quick restart so you can see what that looks like. So after a restart, you can see that now there are icons on the stuff that I have in my Nextcloud folder. So for example, if I go to documents, 
Okay, I can go to hello from Windows and I can type some stuff here. And now I'll go ahead and save. And as you can see, briefly, the icon changed to show that there was synchronization happening here. And if I go back to my Nextcloud web interface, into the files, and I go to documents, you can see there there is hello from windows.txt. So the synchronization is working. So that takes care of my files, but what about my calendars, contacts, tasks, and so on? Well, what you synchronize with depends on what you use. Okay, so there are different options that you can choose here. You can synchronize with the Windows Calendar, which is basically the stuff you get by default on Windows. You can synchronize with Outlook if you use that, and you can even have a custom client. If you want to synchronize with the Windows apps, uh, there is a link here, which I will also add down in the video description, which is this guy. Okay, and as you can see here, you get instructions on synchronizing your calendar and your contacts with Windows. Now, the problem is that this only does calendar and contacts. It doesn't do reminders and it doesn't do notes. Okay, so you'll have to find external apps for that. If you use Outlook, you can instead use this guy here. Link is also in the description. CaldavSynchronizer.org So basically what this does is it allows you to sync your calendars, tasks and everything else with Microsoft Outlook and uh, it's basically entirely free to use and it supports even the latest versions of Outlook including what comes with Office 365. So if that's your deal go ahead and do that. Now in my case I'm going to show you a third option which is EM client. So this is basically an email client for Windows and Mac uh, and the nice thing about it is that it supports Nextcloud straight out of the box. Okay, so I'm going to switch my language here to English. And I'm going to say download for free. And we'll go ahead and install this guy. Okay, so the installation is proceeding. Okay, so I don't want to run it on startup. I want it as the default and I want to launch it. Okay, finish. And I can select the team. I'm just going to go with the default here. Now, you can set up your mail account here depending on your email provider. Remember, Nextcloud is not an email server. Okay, so this will depend on your um, email provider. Typically, you can just type your email address in here, click start, and it will synchronize your email. What I'm interested in is the calendar. I've cancelled the default wizard, <coughs> so click on menu up here. <laughs> this could take a while to find at first, guys, and click accounts. And as you can see, you can come back to this screen here. So I'm going to start with my calendar, and I'm going to choose Caldef here. Next. And here, I'll need to put in my Caldev address. Now, you may be wondering, where am I going to get that from? No worries. All you need to do is go to your next cloud dashboard, Go to Calendar, click on Settings and Import, and if you scroll down, you can see here that there is this option, Copy Primary Caldav Address. Okay, so it's been copied. So now all you need to do is go back to EM Client and paste that, as you can see. Now we'll just type in our username, which in my case is TechGuru, and a password. Now, since we set up two-factor authentication, we cannot just use our next cloud password here. So what we need to do is go to our settings, go to security, and I'm going to create an app password here, which I'm going to call EM client Caldav. Create a new app password. We'll just confirm with our next cloud password here. And there it is. So we'll just go ahead and copy this guy, paste it here and click next. Uh, we can give it an account name, whatever, tech guru is fine, and we'll click finish. So now if we go to calendars and we open tech guru, you can see that my two calendars, personal and work, are there. And if I go to personal, the event that I had created from that dashboard is here as well. 
Now I'll need to do the same for contacts. Now, before I can do that, I actually need to install the contacts app inside um, Nextcloud. So I'm going to go to apps here. And I'm going to search for contacts. There we are, contacts, and I'll click download and enable. And now I have a new contacts icon up here. <clears throat> and I'm just going to create a contact here uh, just so we can test that the synchronization is working. So I'll click create contact and I'll call this contact tech guru guy and I'll set the email to keith at that tech dot guru. There we go. And so now, yep, that contact is there. So that being done, I can go back here to menu accounts. I'll click add account, contacts, card dev, next. And then I need to repeat the same process I did for my calendar. So from the contacts app, I'll click settings. Then I'll click on this icon next to contacts and I'll click copy link. And as you can see, it says link copy to clipboard. So now I can go back to EM client, paste that link. Here, type in my username. And again, I'll need to generate an app password. Go back to EM client and paste it here. Okay, so now I have my contacts as well. Okay, so now I can close this and going back here, I can click on contacts. And as you can see, I have contacts here. And there you go, tech guru guy, which I added uh, just a few seconds ago in the next cloud dashboard. So calendars and contacts are sorted in now if we click on this icon here in em client i can go to tasks and my tasks should automatically be synchronized as well so i'll go here to tech guru and as you can see there's personal tasks and work tasks so if i enable these guys you can see that buy milk is here publish quarterly report is here i can actually disable the local ones since i don't need them okay so to make it easier to figure out guys you may call this tech guru calendar reminders and tech guru contacts okay but again i can double click on a task and edit its details from here and even change which list it is stored on so that's calendars contacts and tasks sorted now what about notes now the problem with notes is that em client doesn't really synchronize with the next cloud notes app Luckily, there's a fantastic free application that you can use to get your notes sorted on Windows and even Mac and Linux. So if I go back to my uh, notes here on Nextcloud, you can see that I have this note, this, is this note, blah, 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 bold. Now, this note is actually just a file which is stored in my drive. As you can see, if I go to my files, there's this note folder here. And there it is. This is a test note. Okay, as you can see, it's just a text file. So what you'll want to do, guys, to make it easier, <clears throat> is to go to the Notes app on Nextcloud, go to Settings, and change the default file extension to MD. Okay, Markdown. All right. Now, if I now um, create a new note, so my Markdown note, you can obviously use this as a normal note, but if you know some markdown, you can actually style your note using the markdown syntax, which I'm going to do right here. Okay, so that's my new note here, and that's my old one. If I go to my files and I go to the notes folder, you can see that now the new note has been created with the MD extension. Okay, so now I've been looking for good note apps for a long time, and the one I've settled on is called obsidian okay so we'll go to obsidian.md and i'll click get obsidian for windows there we go and now i'll just install obsidian as usual once obsidian launches you'll need to choose this option here open a folder as a vault 
Okay, so a vault is where you store your notes. So I'll click open and then I'll go to next cloud and choose my notes folder and click select folder. And as you can see, the note that we created from the web is here. And if I click my markdown note, there it is. So now you can add or edit notes in Obsidian and these will automatically be synced to Nextcloud by default. So uh, some edits from Windows, for example, here, and I'll create a new note and I'm going to call it note from Windows, blah, 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 etc, etc. So you can pretty much use this as my notes app. Okay, so I'll go ahead and close Obsidian. And now if I go back to my notes and refresh this page, you can see there it is, note from, actually my notes are here. You can see there it is, note from Windows, and it has been synced already. So notes are working as well. Now when it comes to photos, if I go to my files app, and I go to uh, Nextcloud here, you can see that there is this photos folder here. And by default, all your photos are here. So then you can browse them using your normal Windows Explorer. Now, if you prefer to manage your photos using an app uh, for tagging, sorting them into galleries and so on, rather than just using the file explorer, one app that I can recommend is Milio, or however you pronounce that. The nice thing about Milio is that it is very, very full featured and it can work with just a folder, which is what we want. Okay, so again, the link for Milio will be down in the video description. I'll just show you quickly how it works. Okay, so I'll just install Milio. Okay, I'll click next. I'll click next. And to be honest, we can skip this. And you need to create a Milio account, okay, which can be done on their website. Or you can sign in with your Google, Microsoft, Apple, or Facebook account, which uh, you probably want to avoid if you're following this whole privacy thing. So I'll just quickly sign in with my account. Okay, so it asks me where I want to store uh, my files. I want to store them here. And I'll click Complete Setup. Then I'll click on Actions. And I'll click Add Your Photos. Then I'll click Copy. And I'll simply choose my next cloud photos folder. And I'll click continue. After clicking import now, as you can see, my photos are imported into Milio. Okay, so the nice thing here is that then if I add any photos, they will show up here and obviously on any synchronized device. Okay, the Milo can do a lot of things like organizing your photos by location, by calendar, find people's faces and so on. But this isn't any view of Milo. This is just showing you that you can use a photo management app with your photos stored in Nextcloud. Now, the final thing we'll want to set up is bookmarks. Okay, so as you remember, we did create, we did set up the bookmarks app here on our next cloud and what we want to do basically is synchronize our bookmarks on all our devices now what i would recommend in order to do this is an app or rather a browser extension called Flocus. okay so just go to flocus.org and click download and as you can see it's available for firefox chrome and edge as well as android in my case i'm using edge here so i'll say Flocus for edge and I'll click get, add extension. Now I'll click on the extension icon and I'll click on new account. And from here, I'll choose next cloud bookmarks. Okay, and I'll click add account. And now I need to type in the details. And in here, I will enter my next cloud URL, which is cloud.techgurudemo.com, my username, and then I will type in my password. And I'll click this icon here. I'll click login and grant access. And now back in Flocus, I'll just click save. 
And now if I click sync now, there we go. All good. It has synchronized. Okay. Now, obviously, I don't particularly have any bookmarks here, so there's nothing here. Uh, if I go back to bookmarks on Nextcloud and refresh, there we are. Bookmarks bar, other bookmarks from my Edge browser has been allowed here um, and has been fetched here and I can access them from Nextcloud. And that pretty much sorts out everything on Windows. We have calendars, contacts, reminders, notes, photos and bookmarks all synced on our Windows machine. So here we are on our Mac desktop and we're going to configure uh, everything that we've set up on Nextcloud here on the Mac. So the first step is to install the Nextcloud app. So again, I'm going to go to cloud.techgurudemo.com and I'm going to go ahead and log in. Okay, so from here, I'm going to go to settings and then I'm going to go to mobile and desktop and I'm going to click desktop app. And as you can see, it's detected that we're using macOS, so we'll go ahead and download that. Okay, and now we can install it. Continue, continue. And install. And as you can see, the software has been installed successfully and we'll click close and we can go ahead and click move to trash here. So now I should be able to open the Nextcloud app. And I'll say log in to your Nextcloud and I'll say cloud.techgurudemo.com and I'll click login and grant access. And so now if we go back to the Nextcloud app, you can see that I am asked to synchronize everything. We can change the local folder here if we want to, but I'm not going to bother. So I'm going to say synchronize everything from the server and click connect. And as you can see now, it's synchronizing all of my files. So now if I go to Finder, you can see that I have a Nextcloud entry here. I'm actually going to allow notifications. Uh, here we go. And as you can see, all of my files are here. Okay, including the files I created previously from Windows, for example. So that's it. <laughs> my files are here. Now, the next thing I want to do is configure everything else. Now, from the same page where you got the link to download the desktop app, you'll notice down here that there is an option download macOS or iOS configuration profile. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and click that and click allow. And it says review the profile if you want to install it. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll go to profiles. And as you can see, this will automatically configure my calendar account, which includes the reminders as well, as well as my card dev account, which is basically my contacts. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and click install here and I'll click continue. Now, as you can see, it says enter the settings for the calendar account on cloud.techgurudemo.com. Now, since I've enabled two-factor authentication, I'll need to go to my Nextcloud dashboard, click settings, and then security, and I'll create a new app password. I'm going to call it macOS Cal. Create a new app password. And I'll copy this guy. And back here, I can simply paste it in here. And I need to do the same for my, uh, for my contacts. I'm just going to paste the same password here. As you can see, it says installing profile here. 
and the profile has now been installed. Okay. So now I can close system preferences. I'm actually going to minimize my browser here. And well, we should have some stuff working already. So I'm going to open the calendar. And as you can see, straight away, more events are here. I have my test event, which I created for later today. And I have the work event, which is the all day event I created earlier. And if I click on this calendars icon here, you can see that I have the personal and work calendars from my next cloud configuration. Equally, reminders should also be here. So if I click on the reminders app, you can see that straight away here they are by milk and publish quarterly reports. So those have been synchronized automatically with Nextcloud. Similarly, my contacts should also be there. So if I go to contacts, there we are. Teguru guy, which is from Nextcloud, is here with the details that I configured earlier. So as you can see, it is ridiculously easy to get your calendars, reminders, and contacts configured on Mac OS. But that still leaves us without notes. And unfortunately, the built-in notes app on Mac OS cannot synchronize to Nextcloud at this point. Luckily, we can use Obsidian. So what you need to do is you can download Obsidian, okay, from obsidian.md. Again, links are in the uh, video description, guys. And I'll say get Obsidian for Mac OS, and I'll click allow. Okay, so Obsidian has downloaded, so I'll just go ahead and install it. This is one of those drag and drop installers. And I should now have Obsidian available. Here it is. And I'll click open folder as vault. And then I'll go to next cloud and choose my notes folder and click open. Okay, and just like that, I now have my notes. As you can see, note from Windows, my markdown note. Let's go ahead and create another note here. Note from Mac OS thing different okay and that's it i have my notes available now as well <clears throat> now as for your photos again you can go to next cloud and you can double click on the photos folder and that's all your photos right here now if you prefer to use an app to manage your photos for galleries tagging and all that stuff i recommend that you use milio Again, a link will be down in the video description, but I'll just show you how to quickly get it sorted. So I'll just click Get Milio Now, Download for Mac, Allow, and it's downloaded. And I'll just drag it to the Applications folder. So now I should be able to find Milo here, and here it is. And I'll go ahead and skip this intro here and log in with my Milio account. Or you can also log in with Apple, Google, uh, Microsoft, or Facebook. I will say store original files here. And uh, we'll say complete setup. Now I'll go to actions. And I'll click add your photos. I'll click copy. Next cloud. Photos and click open. And there we go. Our photos are now in Milio. So we've pretty much done everything. Uh, the only thing left is to synchronize our bookmarks. Now, unfortunately, the recommended way of doing this is using Flockus, but Flockus is not available for Safari. As you can see, when I go to the Flockus website, you can see that it's available for Firefox, Chrome, Edge, uh, but not Safari. Okay, so choose what you prefer, Firefox or Chrome. In my case, I'm going to go with Firefox, so I'm just going to quickly get Firefox installed. There we go. And now I'll go to Tools, Add-ons, and I'll search for Flockus. Here it is. 
add to Firefox. Now I will click on the icon and say new account. Choose next cloud bookmarks and click add account. And then I will log in here. So my next cloud URL is cloud.techguru.com. Username is techguru. And I'll type in my password. And I'll say, and then click this button here. Log in. Obviously, I need to log in again since this is now a different browser. Grant access, and that's it. My account is now connected. I'll click save here. And hopefully, if I click sync now. Yep, all good. So now my bookmarks are synced with Nextcloud as well. So basically now we have calendars, contacts, reminders, our files, photos, notes, and even our bookmarks synchronized on our macOS device. Okay, so on Linux, getting Nextcloud set up is actually quite easy. Now, I am assuming here that you're using GNOME, uh, so if you're using KDE, you'll need to read the Nextcloud documentation for how to get this set up. But from GNOME, you can simply go to the GNOME settings, click Online Accounts, and as you can see, Nextcloud is right here. So we'll click it, we'll type in our server, which is cloud.techgurudemo.com, our username, and password. Now, since we've set up two-factor authentication, we'll need to create an app password here. So I'm going to open a browser and I'm going to go to my portal and log in. Now from here, I'll go to my profile and click settings, go to security, scroll down, and I'm going to create a new app password. I'm going to call this GNOME. I'm going to copy this guy, go back to my settings and paste it here. Now from here, you can choose what you want. Obviously, we want the calendar and the contacts. Uh, we want documents and you may want files as well. Now, if you enable everything, this will actually give you access to your files as well. The problem is that the files aren't actually downloaded to your computer. They are accessed online one at a time as you access them. And if you need quick access to your files or you deal with a large number of files at a time, that's not going to fly. So feel free to keep this enabled if you want to, but I'm actually going to disable this and then set up the next cloud app. OK, so I'll click close now and that should have been set up automatically. So now, if I go to the calendar app here, GNOME Calendar, you can see that my event has shown up, tested, okay? And if I move to January, you can see again that my work event is here as well. And if I click on this calendar icon here, you can see that both my personal and work calendars have been synchronized, okay? And I can actually disable the calendars on this computer since I'm most only going to be using the ones on Nextcloud. Okay, so as you can see, calendars are fine. Now, contacts should have been synchronized as well. So if I now go to contacts, please select your main address book. I'm going to choose contacts here. And done. And as you can see, Tech Guru Guy is there. So my contacts are now also synchronized with my Linux machine. Now, what about the files? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the Nextcloud client. Now, again, this depends on your particular distribution on Linux, uh, but on most, you can find it uh, in your software distribution center. As you can see here, Nextcloud Desktop Sync Client. Okay, so this is what uh, you would use on GNOME. If you're using KDE, you can use this guy instead. Okay, so I'm going to go here and I'm going to click install. Okay, let's go ahead and open it now. Log into your next cloud, https colon slash slash, and the address 
of your cloud server, which is that in my case. Login, grant access. And so now if we go back here, as you can see, it's done. Again, we can choose to synchronize to any folder. I'm just going to keep it next cloud and connect. And so as you can see now, everything is synchronizing. And if I go to my files, you can see that there is now a next cloud folder here. And all of my documents, as you can see, have been synchronized from my next cloud drive. So next, we'll need to sort out the reminders or tasks. I'm going to install this program called to do, to space do. As you can see, task manager for known. Okay, and I'm going to click install. Okay, so I'll open it now that it's been installed. And here we are. Okay, so if I click on personal tasks, you can see that there is buy milk. And if I click on work tasks, you can see here publish quarterly report. I'll go ahead and click another task here, new task from Linux. Okay, and then I can click on it here and I can set a due date for, for example, uh, let's see, tomorrow. Okay. And so those are my tasks. Next. What about photos? Now, again, I can go to my next cloud folder here. And obviously, my photos are here. But if you prefer to use an app to manage your tasks, <clears throat> I would recommend Shotwell, which is a really nice uh, photo manager for Linux. So I'm installing Shotwell from my um, software center. And I'll open this guy. And then all you need to do is click File. Import from folder, next cloud, photos. And what you'll want to do is say import in place. So the photos stay where they are. And as you can see there, my photos have been imported and I can use all of the features of Shotwell to adjust the photo, crop it and so, so on. So that's my photos on um, my Linux system. Next, when it comes to bookmarks, you should know the drill right now if you're watching the entire video, but basically I can go to extensions, add-ons and themes, and search for Flocus. Click add to Firefox, if you're using Firefox as your browser, of course. Then click on the icon, click new account, add account, and here we'll type in our details. So again, cloud.tegurudemo.com, guru. And then I'll sign in using this button here. Login, grant access, and then click save. And so now if I click on the Flocus, Flocus link, I can click sync now. And there we go. My bookmarks have now been synced to Nextcloud as well. Finally, what about notes? Well, I've searched high and low for an application, and again, I can't find one that serves me better than Obsidian. So I'll search for Obsidian here. And I'll get Obsidian for Linux. Actually, I wonder whether it is already in the so oh yeah it is here okay so i can install it from the software center as you can see on pop os it's available as a flat pack which is fine okay open open a folder as a vault i'll go to my next cloud folder i'll choose my notes folder and there we are my notes are now in Obsidian. I'm going to go ahead and create a new note here. Note from Linux. And there we are. My notes are here as well. So as you can see, we now have our Nextcloud files, calendars, contacts, reminders, notes, photos, and bookmarks all synced on Linux with our Nextcloud server.
Okay, so now that we've set up everything on our desktop, let's also configure our phone. So I have a virtual Android device here, which I'm going to be doing this on. So the first thing you'll want to do is go to the Play Store. And you'll want to search for Dav X, Dav X5, this guy here. Now, this is not a free program. As far as I know, I had paid for something euro for this program. But trust me, it is well worth it. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and install it here since I've already bought it. Now, once that's installing, we also want to download and install the Nextcloud app. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to search for Nextcloud. And install that guy as well. Okay, so I'm going to open Nextcloud now. And I'm going to click Login. And I'll type in my server address, cloud.techgurudemo.com. Okay, and I'll log in. Now, we want to click Allow here. And there we are. <laughs> Our files are here. I can click on Documents, and you can see all the documents that I created earlier. So this is where you can access all of your docs. Now, what about calendars, contacts, reminders, and all of that jazz? Well, we can click here on Settings, or rather the Burger menu, and then click Settings. And as you can see, there is this option here, Sync Calendar and Contacts with DAVX5. So I'm going to click this. I'll click Login. And I'll need to log in again to do this, guys. So, grant access. Now, it says your client now should now be connected. You can close this window. Now, on this emulator, this is a bit weird because the window should close automatically, but it doesn't. Uh, so, what I'll need to do here is then click this. Go to DAVX5. And there we go, we can go through the configuration wizard. Now here we need to choose which app we are going to use for tasks. I'm going to choose open tasks. Okay, so we'll enable it. And this will prompt us to install open tasks. Okay, so that's installed. So now we can go back to DAVX5. Next. And we'll need to grant permissions. I'm going to click all of the below and I'll click allow, allow, allow. And that's it. Next. And we're going to set regular sync intervals to allow the app to run in the background and synchronize our data. And there we go. Now, one thing that's important here, as it says, is to make sure that you keep your account name the same as your email address. Okay. Other than that, we'll say create account. And as you can see, now we have the contacts, the calendars, and any web calendar subscriptions that we have. So if I click on contacts here, and then I'll also synchronize my work. And that should basically synchronize everything. Okay, so now I'll click the sync button down here. And this will synchronize all of your stuff. I'm pretty sure it does it for the calendars as well, but just in case. Yep, there we go. Okay, so now we should have all of that set up. So first, I'm going to go to the calendar. And as you can see, yes, here there's the test event, which I got from Nextcloud. And if I switch uh, to, let's see, a month view... Here, yeah, on January 4th, I have some work events. So the calendar events are working. Let's also check the reminders, which is basically the tasks app that we downloaded. And there we go. Personal tasks, work tasks, personal tasks. There we go. Buy milk, new task from Linux, work tasks is there as well. That's fantastic. And now let's also check the contacts. So my contacts are here. 
Now, one thing you should note is that by default, the contacts app will display your Google contacts if you're signed into a Google account. So what you need to do is click the burger menu, go to settings, Click on default account for new contacts and make sure you use your DAVX5 address book. And under contacts to display, we can click customize and say again contacts from our DAVX5 address book. And tap save, go back, and there we go. Tech Guru Guy, the contact that we added last time. So again, adding contacts here will now also synchronize them to our next cloud server. Now, one thing that's uh, missing here is notes, okay? Luckily, there's an app for that. So we can go back to the Play Store. And we can search here for next cloud notes. There we go. And install this guy. Choose account. And as you can see, it's already detected our uh, Nextcloud account from the Nextcloud app. We'll tap Allow. And there we go. Our notes are here. And I'm just going to go ahead and add another note. Like that. Okay. And so now we have notes as well. Now again, remember that for your files and for your photos, you'll want to go to your Nextcloud app. And uh, as you can see here, you have everything. And from the burger menu, I can go to media, and this will actually display a gallery of your picture files. Okay, so this is where you'll manage your photos and stuff like that. Now, what about bookmarks? Luckily, Flockus is available for Android. So again, we'll go to the Play Store and I'm going to search for Blockus, which is here. Install. Now, this is still in early access, but it, it does actually work. I'm going to go ahead and open it. Next cloud bookmarks, add account. And here we'll type in uh, our detail. So in my case, it's cloud techgurudemo.com username is techguru and I'll type my password and I'll click this button login grant access your client should now be connected and let's see about that we'll go back to uh, Flocos wherever it went all right Okay, and we'll tap save. We'll then tap sync. And there we are. Our bookmarks are now also synchronized here. Now, again, this is a bit of an early access uh, application. It's basically just a bookmark manager as a standalone app. It doesn't actually synchronize uh, with any browser you have on your device. But hey, at least you have access to your bookmarks here. So with that done, we have our calendars, contacts, reminders, files, notes, and even bookmarks synchronized on our Android device. Let's now set up Nextcloud on our iOS device. I'm using an old iPhone here. So the first thing you want to do is go to the App Store and you'll want to search to install the Nextcloud app. Uh, so I'll search for Nextcloud here. There we are. And I'm going to download Nextcloud. Now, whilst that's downloading, you'll notice that there is another app suggested, which is Cloud Notes. Now, this is not a free app, unfortunately. It costs something like $2 or something. But if you want to access your notes from Nextcloud, you will need it. Now, in my case, I've already bought this, so I'm just going to download this again. But again, you will need to buy it. In the meantime, the Nextcloud app has downloaded, so we'll go ahead and open it. We'll tap Allow and we'll click Login. And here we'll type in our server address, HTTPS colon slash slash cloud dot tech 
guru demo.com Okay, we'll tap login and we'll need to log in here. And as you can see, there are my files. So you can access your files using the Nextcloud app. And if you tap on media, you will get again the collection of all photos you have in your photos folder displayed here as thumbnails, which you can then obviously browse through. And you can see those thumbnails coming up right here. Now, if you also want to access your files from the files app, you'll need to go to more and then scroll down to settings. And what you'll want to do is go to advanced and make sure that this item here, disable files app integration is not switched on. It, it shouldn't be switched on by default, but it's good to check just in case. Now, whilst you're there, if you go back to settings, tap on auto upload and allow permission. So this will allow you to automatically have photos snapped on your device upload it to your Nextcloud Photos folder. So I'm going to allow this. As you can see, by default, the folder is Photos, which is good for me. Auto upload photos. You can even only use the Wi-Fi connection, auto upload videos, and you can even you choose to remove them from the camera roll after they are uploaded. I also like to tap auto upload in the background and I'll say always allow to allow that to happen. Now, obviously, this is limited. You will still need to open the next cloud app every now and then to make sure the synchronization happens, unfortunately. This is a limitation of iOS and not of Nextcloud. And if you want to upload all the photos on your device to Nextcloud, you tap the upload the whole camera roll option to get that sorted. So now we have our files and photos here. And also, if we go to the files app uh, and click browse, you can then tap on locations. And as you can see, uh, there's, an, a num uh, there's a notification for more locations. And you'll want to enable Nextcloud. So now if I tap on Nextcloud, you can see that I can access the files in my Nextcloud drive from the iOS Files app as well, which is great for integration with other iOS apps. Now, to get the calendars, contacts, and reminders sorted, the easiest way is to go to the next cloud control panel in Safari. So I'm going to go to cloud.techgurudemo.com. Okay, so now from here, you want to tap on your user icon, go to settings, then tap on the hamburger menu, go to mobile and desktop, And from down here, you can see it says download macOS or iOS configuration profile. And that's what we need. So we'll say allow. Review the profile in the settings app if you want to install it. So let's do that. We'll go to settings. And you can see that there's profile downloaded now. And we'll say install. We'll enter our password. We'll say install again and install yet again. Now we'll need to enter our password. Now, since I'm using two factor authentication, uh, I can't just type in my next cloud password. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Safari, which has my uh, next cloud dashboard here. And then I'm going to go to security. And I'm going to click down here, create a new app password. I'm going to call it iOS, create new app password. And as you can see, it's here. I'll tap that icon to copy it. And it's supposed to be copied. So now back in settings, I'll paste the password in here. And I'll do the same for the card DAF password. Okay, so the profile has now been installed. So now if I go back to settings 
and I go to passwords and accounts, you can see that I have now my new Nextcloud accounts. I have calendars and reminders on the top one and contacts on the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to tap on the first one. And as you can see, calendars and reminders are enabled. And on the second one, you can see that, yeah, everything should be fine now. So now I'll tap on fetch new data. And basically, I'm going to set fetching of new data for items which are not push, which is basically these next cloud, as you can see here. Okay, I'm going to set it to every 15 minutes. So my stuff gets updated every 15 minutes. I've tried leaving it on automatically, but it just doesn't work that well. Okay, dokie. So that should be done now. Next, I'll tap on calendar. And I'm going to go to default calendar. And as you can see, my next cloud calendars are there. And I'm going to set my default calendar to the personal one on next cloud. I'm also going to go to reminders. I'm going to set the default list here to personal tasks on Nextcloud. Okay, so that should be set up. So now if I go to calendar, yep, there it is, test event. And if I scroll to the fourth, there it is, some work event. So my calendars are all set up. If I go to my reminders, they should now be there. Yep, there we go, personal tasks. Buy milk, new task from Linux, work tasks, publish quarterly report, etc. So those are working as well. And if I go to my contacts, which is here. I can go to groups and I'll basically hide everything except my next cloud contacts. And as you can see, there it is. The guru guy is here. Now, what about notes? Well, that's where this uh, Cloud Notes app comes in. So we'll open it. And again, we'll need to type in our username and password as well as the URL. Password, we'll need to use that generated password from before. And we'll tap connect. Close and sync. And there we go. Our notes are here as well. And as you can see, I can access them, no problem. So, now we have Nextcloud files, photos, reminders, calendars, contacts, and notes, all synced on our iOS device. The one thing we don't have, unfortunately, is bookmarks, uh, because Flocus is not currently available for iOS. I hope that changes in the future, but for now, that's the one thing we can't do on an iOS device. You may remember that we installed an office suite. How do we actually get access to that? Well, if you go to settings and you go to built-in built -in code server, you can see that it says the built-in code server is designed to work with the Collabra online app. And there's a link to install the app, which I'll click here. And I'll say download and enable. Now, if I go back to settings, You can see that besides the built-in code server, there is now Nextcloud Office, which as you can see is here. Okay, so here I can um, change the settings. Okay, but to actually use the office, I can go to my files. And I can add a new document, for example. And I'm going to call it uh, Test Doc. And I can pick a template. I can, I'm going to choose blank. Now I'll click on test doc. And as you can see, the document loads up in my browser. Okay. And I have pretty much <coughs> LibreOffice here, which I can do anything with. Okay. So for example, I can say this is a sample document, blah, blah. And I can insert an image. Uh, I'm going to go to my photos here and insert this birdie. Here we go. And obviously I have the formatting, tables, and all of that straight in my Nextcloud installation, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, and when I click File, you can see that I can click Save, but it does automatically save as well. Uh, and when I close, that document is now updated. 
and I can even do this for spreadsheets and presentations. So basically I have an office in the cloud, which I think is pretty damn cool. Now you have your own cloud server with no third party involvement and with 100% control of how it works. Not bad, eh? <laughs> As I've mentioned in the video, what I'm showing you today is how to get the functionality provided by Microsoft, Google and Apple, meaning mail, calendars, contacts, reminders, notes, photos, um, office suite collaboration and bookmarks. There's actually much more that Nextcloud can do, which we haven't covered here and which I may cover in a follow-up video. I may also cover some more advanced topics, such as setting up end-to-end -end encryption, using a more stable database backend, setting up better cron jobs and stuff like that. Let me know down in the comments below if that's something that would interest you. So, I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, please consider liking the video and subscribing to Tech Guru. Videos like this take a lot of time and energy to make, and your subscription helps to keep me motivated. Also, if you really want to help, like these fantastic people on screen now, please consider subscribing to me on Patreon. Patrons help me financially, and in return get early access to videos, the ability to suggest video topics, an exclusive patron-only chat room, and even technical support. Finally, remember I'm also on Odyssey if you want to watch me outside of YouTube. Well, that's it for today. I'll catch you in the next one, and as always, thanks for watching.